on the inside. Might have to hear though, because Christopher Zostin gets a good run coming back out of turn five. But again, good stuff from young Tommy Prining to keep him at bay. So those two having a, a huge scrap. But Tommy Prining's doing, the, doing a fine job here, isn't he? Defending the position. No, he's doing a really nice job getting the, making the car as wide as possible, denying uh, Christopher Socklin to pass at any corner. I'm sure Christopher Socklin will try at some moment, like we see now, diving into the inside. He will not stick there for the, for the rest of the race, but he needs to find the perfect moment to do the movement. Uh, otherwise, he will, he will lose, the, he will lose the, the position and probably he will lose the, the momentum with, together with uh, Thomas Prining. And just keep, keep that pressure to force uh, a mistake from, from the Porsche Junior. Austrian driver in the Austrian team there holding on to fourth place and after the race he's got to get as quickly from the uh, paddock back to uh, back across the bridge over to our side of the track because uh, for German TV he's, he told me he's going to be commentating on the Formula 4 race which comes up after this uh, not long after this race finishes which he raced last year as, as a co-commentator for that so busy weekend for Tommy Prining busy at the moment trying to fend off Christopher Zoschling who is throwing everything at him he's banging on the door but Tommy Prining will not let him in he hasn't made a mistake, he hasn't left a single gap yet. But this is relentless pressure from Christopher Zosling. I'm just wondering if, if they do start to really fight each other, whether there might be time for the next two, Rettenbacher and Yeloli, to catch them up as well in sixth and seventh. About three seconds behind at the moment. Yeah, but luckily for those two guys, uh, uh, Rettenbacher and, and Yeloli are also challenging yeah, together. So they are not yeah. being really able to uh, close the gap. They are getting closer and closer but they are also challenging within, to, uh, they are also both challenging for position together, so they are not really on a really high pace. They're about two tenths quicker at the moment, so it would take a while to catch up, but it's definitely coming down that gap between these two, fourth and fifth, and then the next two, Rettenbacher in sixth and Yellowly in seventh place. Would you ever do that as a racing driver? If you, if you have got a driver ahead of you who's about the same speed, and then you see that you're both catching the next group, would you sometimes just back off and, and not attack and just see if you can work together to catch the next group? Yeah, it depends a bit on how many laps it's remaining. And you need also to, to let kind of agree with it. We see now the switchback from Zerklin, really nice, really beautiful moment. He needs to keep that front. Yeah, perfectly. He did it. He nice. did really nailed it. So he did. He went to the outside. Said to Tom, "Okay, I'm not. I'm not challenging for position." Then bam, do the switchback and surprise him with an inside line. And he had no. And Thomas Prine had no chance to nice. see now the replay. I'm on the outside. No, I'm going to the inside. Last the possible break. second that he did that, wasn't it? It's yeah. A very good move. Yeah, this is exactly what you need to do in such a situation. Try a surprise maneuver, and it definitely worked out. Not so happy, friends, Conrad. Yeah, and this is the other challenge. We have three laps to go. Christian Engelhardt is closer than ever to Dennis Olsen. Will he try some uh, overtaking maneuver? Not. We'll see now. Yeah, well, he's got the momentum, hasn't he? He's uh, been working really hard to close the gap here on Dennis Olsen, has Christian Engelhardt. And he's also bringing Mikael Ammermuller with him as well, isn't he? So Engelhardt pushing hard now in the closing stages to get past uh, Dennis Olsen. Dennis finished third in the championship last year. Christian Engelhardt has been the perennial runner-up the last four seasons in this championship. He's finished second three times. And the other one, he finished in third place. Second two years running in 2015 and 2016. Second a few years ago in 2013 as well. Been racing Porsches since 2008. He's also racing GT cars. The Lamborghini Huracan this weekend in the GT Masters, so a busy programme for him of qualifying, free practice and four races in the various classes and cars that he's driving this weekend. Will that be difficult for him to hop from a Lamborghini into a Porsche within a couple of hours of each other and then go back into the Lamborghini or if you're a good driver, is that not a problem? I think it's not a problem. An experienced driver like Christian Engelhardt he can adapt really quick. He's really used to drive Porsche. He's been driving Porsche Caracap many, many years. I think it's five years or six years. Yeah. So he gets used to it uh, really, really quick. We see that Wolfgang really locking a little bit. Oh, it's Wolfgang Nathan. Sorry. Oh, Oof. that's... Uh, Riding up over him, was it? The uh, 33 car of Stefan uh, Rekopf. Tried to get out of it, too late, run out of room, <laughs> and then whoop, over the wheel arches and back down again, hopefully. No damage done to either car. 
and then losing a position as uh, Philip Sager got past him on the exit. So that was a tight battle going on, Wolf Nathan okay. and surviving though. So Engelhardt right on the tail from Dennis Olsen, he needs to defend. Two laps to go, including the one they've just started. Gets a good run coming out of the corner. Christian Engelhardt in the silver and blue number five Porsche, the Black Falcon Porsche. New to the championship, looking for the win. Final lap of the race. And Amin Miller is the, perfect, uh, is the perfect spectator of the situation, so yeah. he can be the guy. Either he stayed on third place, either he can win the race. So there's still everything open. So let's see now this last lap. Dennis also needs to make the car as wide as possible. Amin Miller will try to attack Engelhardt as well. Engelhardt tried to attack Dennis Olsen, so it's a completely open fight for first place. Dennis Olsen is on for a hat trick of wins. When both races at Hockenheim, he's winning this one. He's got about two and a half kilometers to hold on to it, though. The checkered flag is being readied down below the commentary box on the start finish line. Christian Engelhardt is trying everything to get past Dennis Olsen. He's throwing caution to the wind. He's not worrying about the driver behind him, Mikhail Amamala. Mikhail is just uh, about a length behind them now. Work their way through this series of corners, but unless you can get a brilliant run coming out of here, I don't think he's going to have time to out-drag Dennis Olsen, who's got his nose clear as he comes through the final turn. Turn 12, check and flag ready, and the third win of the season in three attempts goes to Dennis Olsen. He takes the check and flag by a tenth of a second. That's all it is after 18 laps of racing, one tenth of a second. Christian Engelhardt and Mikael Amamola right behind, less than a second covering the top three. Christopher Zoschling, after trying everything for lap after lap after lap, finally getting put through on Tommy Prining with a, a few laps to spare and then pulling away from him for fourth place. But that's third in the category with Philip Sager, fourth. And the one that dropped back late on was Jorn Schmidt 